All right, it's marina time. I don't have that kind of control. Get a line on. Ah, uh, that was not the most graceful of entrances at all. Come on, Chopster. A little bit hairy for a minute there. Don't tell me that. It can't be. We would have finished the job. However, we came across a small problem. We are uh, frustrated, to say the least. Always good when you uh, mistake the currency that they quote you in. <laughs> Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. What seems like a lifetime ago, we left Australia, intending to sail our way around the world. It's been a roller coaster since then, and while the plan has changed many times, we've been laughing our way through and learned a new lesson for every step of the way. And between us, the real adventure has only just begun. Last week on Sailing Millennial Falcon, we had a ripper sail down to Kariku from Grenada. Smash! Everything down, all the dishes are going everywhere. We're very well prepared, I promise. We were headed north so that we could park the boat dockside to replace the forestay. The brisk 27 knot conditions, however, managed to blow out our tired old staysail along the way. All right, it's marina time. We have put all of our fenders out, dock lines and all that stuff. The wind started to kick up a little more. It's typical. When I booked the marina berth, um, the wind was absolutely fine. Gonna be max 10 knots uh, throughout the day. Now all of a sudden it's like 15, gusts up to 18, and now it's not so good. I've been up the mast when it's worse, but it's not ideal. Uh, but look, it's fine, it is what it is. Uh, so we'll be heading off in about a couple of minutes. Ugh, 18 knots, off the door, just where you want. At least it looks pretty empty. There's no other boats there, so that's a plus. Right, I get some lines on. Come on, go to work. Get a line on. Get something. I don't have that kind of control. Get a line on. So what are we doing? All right, we're on the docks. Uh, that was not the most graceful of entrances at all. Um, and thankfully I forgot to film, so that's okay. We didn't show you. <laughs> um, yeah, we're on the docks. We're all tied up. And now I guess we're just gonna get straight to it and actually get ourselves up the mast. Yeah. Thankfully we've roped in some help for us. Give us a wave, Craig. You may recall that previously, we tried to remove the forestay without lowering the roller furler. However, we're unable to get the job done due to the roller bearings that live between each of the furler tube extrusions. This time, the plan was to lower the entire roller furler and forestay assembly down using the spinnaker halyard, then replace the wire and reinstall. Not wanting to spend a moment longer than required at dockside, we got straight to work. Adam is going up the mast this time. Only because Craig's here to winch me. Yep, exactly. And you're off the hook. Everyone's always like, oh, Chiara, you're amazing for going up the mast. Just because I don't really want to haul Adam's weight up there and I just get to sit there and kind of do nothing while Adam hauls me up. It's really not that hard going up the mast. <laughs> With the top pin removed and the forestay hanging from a rolling hitch in the spinnaker halyard, it was time to disconnect the lower end and drop the whole tube dockside. Easy way, Kiara, start easing. Easy. Go, Adzi. 
quite well, I think. Yeah, it was um, a little bit hairy for a minute there when it first first had to get it up and out of the boat and over the water and stuff. As we started easing, it just didn't bend too much. Hopefully all the extrusions are still married and happy. Yeah, it's good. I'm so glad that we actually have somebody with us who's done this before. It would literally just be blind leading the blind if it were Adam and I. But Craig's already done this, so I'm, I'm really glad he kind of knows what he's looking for, I think. Um, obviously every furl is different, but uh, it seems to be progressing quite well, which is really good. And the extra hand obviously is awesome. What do you reckon, 12 mil or 10 mil? I don't know, I'm really, I'm like, wondering. No, oh, hang on. Don't tell me that. Can't be. We measured it. No, it's can't be. We've got to get the calipers. What have you done? What have you done to it? It's rope spaghetti. With the two wire lengths firmly taped together at regular intervals, we could now cut the new forestay to length. More like the wire will end. All right, so we've come across our first hiccup of the day. Do you want to explain what it is? One bloody grub screw. One. That <laughs> grub screw there has derailed the entire project. Look down the way, every other tube comes apart, no worries. <laughs> the first grub screw we come across is threaded and therefore we can't get the, the cable in. Ridiculous. <laughs> one grub screw. One grub screw. Now we have to like drill it out, tap a new one. Fortunately, we've just met a gentleman who may have exactly what we need and he's going to come by and drop it off. So we might get lucky and get this all buttoned up today, but... And now we have to help him do his... And now we have to, yeah, now we have to help him do his <laughs> first day. Yeah, we, well, you can't just take his yeah. good, good charity and do nothing with it. now that everything went to custard. So it's uh, the end of the day. Unfortunately, we have not finished the job. We would have finished the job. However, we came across a small problem. The wire isn't the right size. Um, <laughs> We ordered 10 millimeter wire and it's meant to be 11 millimeter wire. Um, even as we took it down, we were looking at it and we're like, seems just slightly different. And Adam measured it and he's like, oh, it's probably like 10.3. Our calipers must be wrong. Probably just 10, it's fine. And we got all the way into putting it into the tube as, as you've seen until it finally came to Adam putting on the Starlock fitting on the end and the cones were just remarkably different. There's no way that the wire will fit on to the Starlock fitting. This was at about 3.30 and all the shops here close at four o'clock and it's Friday as well. No chance that we're gonna be able to fix it today, tomorrow or Sunday. That's it for now. So what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna put many halyards on the front and uh, tighten them down, reef them all down so that our mast is supported and we're going to go back out to anchor. We're going to order a new stay in and we're going to have to get it sent to us, express shipping. We're going to come back here for one other day as soon as it arrives and we're going to put it back up then. It's, it's freaking not ideal, it's a real bummer because this was meant to be our, our chance to leave. This isn't meant to be our time to leave Grenada, it was time for us to go after so many months, this was it. 
and it just hasn't come through. I feel responsible because I was the one ordering it, but we both did kind of measure it and because the roller furler tube goes so far over the rigging, you just you just can't get a little caliper in there to measure properly. You can kind of get one in there, um, enough to see the, a vague measurement. Um, and at that stage, we thought that it was 10 millimeters, which is exactly the same as our backstay. It made sense. Why would it change to 11 millimeters? Turns out uh, it's 11 millimeters. <laughs> it is what it is. So back out of anchor, another week in Karyaku. As I'm sure, as I'm sure Kiara told you all last night, it hasn't gone well. A one millimeter error in measurements has pretty much derailed the whole the whole job. It's just difficult to measure the gauge of the wire when it's up inside the tube. And we were we were off. We checked each other's work, and we're we're both kicking ourselves really badly. No point crying over spilt milk. So now the job is to. Um, Strip, all, strip the tube down, I've taken out the, the wire, the 10 mil wire, which is not correct. I suppose silver lining will keep it as spare rigging wire for any stay shorter than the uh, four stay. It's gonna be a week, two week delay. Um, I'm not gonna sit dockside for that time, so yeah, strip down the tube, lash it all down on the deck, get everything covered and, and sorted. We'll reinforce the mast with uh, all the halyards we could find. And that'll, that'll suffice because we do have the baby stay, um, so I'm not worried about that at all. And then it's back out to anchor until we can get what we need to finish the job. Kind of disappointing. It has pretty seriously derailed our plans, timings wise. Such is life. I want to show you something that'll make the problems we had prior more clear. Come, come down and look at the, the tube. If you watched the episode where we did the side stays and we tried to change out the four stay wire, while the extrusion was up the mast, you'll remember it didn't work because there are roller bearings and joining tubes between each of these extrusions. It occurs to me that perhaps you don't know what it looks like between the extrusions because I didn't know either um, before doing laying it down and doing this exercise. So I just want to show you what, what the deal is and what the joint inside the two extrusions looks like and why the last time we tried it didn't work. So that you, know, you don't try to do the same thing. So what you have here is the two extrusions and then they marry up like that and slide together like that and then you put your grub screws in. The reason we couldn't get the wire out is because the swage fitting won't fit in this, in this, uh, this is essentially the bearing, this is what keeps the furler roughly central when it, when it furls the sail or unfurls the sail. One of the problems we had yesterday and I highly recommend everyone sort of puts it on their list of things to check regularly, is these grub screws, particularly the ones down near the further end, because they get all the salt water and all the, like all the salty air, they tend to jam. And when they jam, because they're quite a small Allen key to get them, to get them out, they thread very easily. And that's exactly what happened to us with the first grub screw that we came across. So we ended up having to drill and tap the next size up. So if you're ever up the mast with the jib off, and you're sort of stuffing around on the force day, take your Allen key with you, crack them open gently, do not, do not force it or you'll end up like me. Um, crack them open gently, clean them, new thread locker, blue, whack them back in again. And I also recommend, because you can reach the bottom section of the extrusion if you sort of stand on the bowsprit, if you're tall, I would even cut away the, uh, the thread locker blue and put Tef gel on there instead and just make a point of checking them whenever you're out on a nice day sailing. Just go up there every once a month or whatever and just check them as often as possible um, because they're the ones that are gonna seize if any of them do.
right, at anchor with no force day, waiting for the new wire to be sent in. We are uh, frustrated to say the least. Good news is, is that our sail should be ready today. Should be. No harm, no foul if it's not ready, but we're gonna go and quickly nip ashore to see what the status is and hopefully uh, get one piece of the puzzle back and working. And uh, yeah, one step towards being ready to move on. In other news, we put a new order in with uh, the same company that did such a wonderful job last time, riggingonly.com, I think they're called. So hopefully that'll be on a plane uh, tonight or today and uh, in Grenada a few days later. At this stage, the plan is to up. We'll talk about the plan later because it changes as often as my undies. So let's just go and get the sale. <laughs> than are quoted 150 US dollars, which is always good when you uh, mistake the currency that they quote you in. <laughs> um, yeah, they, uh, they did a nice little job on, on fixing it up and it'll certainly tide us over for a little while yet. 